<laughs> All right then. So, big bad question number one. What do you do? What do I do? So I pursue music, um, I intertwine storytelling, poetry, um, a little bit hip hop, neo soul, R and B, different genres, try to be as versatile as possible. Um, and yeah, as, um, at the moment I'm doing it over as a rapper, to be honest. Um, but eventually I do want to transition into just songwriting and do that for, you know, other singers, other artists, uh, maybe mm. other and eventually go over to um, theatre. So I want to songwrite for, for like musicals and stuff. And I don't really want to be the face of it as much, you know, but at the moment, just for leverage purpose and name purpose. I just need to build my, you know what I mean? My little, little portfolio and that. And then afterwards, you know, transition into the, the behind the scenes of it all. So like, that is really interesting. I had no idea. That's really, if you I know it's not a question on the list, but if you don't mind me asking, how, how far in that process are you like, have you done like ghost writing or writing for other people yet? Or is it just like part of a, a plan, if you know what I mean? Like, have you already started writing tunes for other people or? Yeah, so like on my computer, I've got a bunch of songs that I haven't released yet that I think would work best for a singer. Obviously, I'm not a singer like that. I can hold, you know, a little whatever melody here and there, but for mm -hmm. the moment, I, mean, I can't go up and do a ballad. <laughs> but <laughs> certain songs that I write with singers in mind or certain types of singers, singers in mind, so I could write a song that I have like a country singer in mind. Yeah, yeah. Music singer, rock and roll singer, you know what I mean? Just different, different genres covering and stuff. So that eventually is going to be it. But the theatre one more so is what I'm looking forward to. Like, definitely want to get into like musicals, and, you know, the songwriting behind musicals and stuff. So that's Ricky. What comes first, is, like the lyrics or the idea for, um, you know, like you said, country? Do you think like, oh, I want to write something with like a, a bluegrass feel, or do you write the lyrics and then think this would work with a a soul single or this way, you know what I mean? Which way around does it go in the process? In the concept, uh, the lyrics will come and then I build off it and kind of work out what the concept is. And then by the end of it, then I'll know who you'll go for. Like, but I think as I, you know, go into it a bit more, I'll start thinking of the person before I start writing and then I'll get into it. But you know, some certain songwriters, they have to like, even like have meetings with who they're going to write for and stuff. Mm. Like their head. You know, asking questions and then just to invite yeah, yeah, yeah. that's eventually probably how it will go but prior to then i'll just have my little back catalog and then just do it that way and just see what happens really that's awesome yeah, that's me man what about you what do you do oh man what do i do what don't i do that's a, no no what, what do i do um uh drums and percussion is my like first love i guess the thing that got me into music so playing drums uh, and then later on percussion, mainly kit, wanting to play in bands. So uh, growing up, listening to a lot of um, reggae, hip hop, punk, ska, bit of jungle, but going to that a lot more when I was older. Um, what else? And then obviously stuff my parents into like soul and, and funk and stuff. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, just always been into, just always wanted to play drums really. And then through playing drums, side of band for being the band needs someone to write the songs so I started writing the songs got into lyric writing always been into like lyricism from folk music and like the hip-hop persuasion just like good lyrics lyrical driven tunes and then uh through the um the songwriting got more into writing uh poetry and spoken word just having loads of rhymes in a book that weren't going to be used for a song and just being like what can I do with this and thought about going down the rap route but at the time everyone I knew was trying to be a rapper, so I thought, what, what else is there? And a friend of mine showed me um, Georgia Poet, uh, and it was a video where he was like, talking over a piano, and I was like, oh, I've got loads of loads of lyrics, like, I could I could do that kind of thing. And then, yeah, and then later, just um, recently, probably over the past two years, more into music production, trying to get better at beat making, mainly through lockdown, just not being able to meet with people as much, and just trying to make music in, um, yeah, like just trying to still create really and got more into like using logic and NPC and yeah. stuff like that and sampling and that. So yeah, I guess that's what I do music in. And of course, working with young people is a big part of my my, my day to day, my career and my passion, I guess is like, yeah, helping young people be creative and stuff. You so, do yeah. songwriting for your band? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, but mainly just the lyrics, like not really like the chords and stuff. So I'm probably the main lyricist. Like in one of the bands I'm in, Lobster, uh, Spud like writes a lot of like, cause he's a good rapper. 
but he 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 more writes like raps that we then put in the tunes, if you know what I mean, rather than the songs. Where I'm more the guy that writes like like the choruses, the the, the kind of verses, then like maybe the, switching it up in the third verse. And sometimes I have ideas of melody, but melody is an, um, a strong point of mine that usually comes from seeing what the keyboard puts down and then handing it to Spud and seeing what he comes up with. So uh, more just the lyricist, I guess, more so than the songwriter. Just a guy that puts the words down, really. So, yeah, yeah. How many bands are you in? I'm in two proper bands, man. So, yeah, yeah. I'm in an Irish folk band <laughs> where we do covers. So that's easy. And then, uh, and then uh, Lair Lobster, like ska, punky, reggae. But I uh, was in another band at uni for a while, which was really good. That was more like trip up stuff. But uh, <laughs> two of them were a couple and they broke up. So, it's just one of them. The band just <laughs> falls apart. But, yeah. <laughs> But that was a good band, man. We did that was the first, well, the only international gig I've done was with them over in Lithuania because the lead singer was Lithuanian. So we went out and played over there. So yeah, yeah. And then bits of death in here and there, but that's more on the kit rather than like writing for people. That's more coming and playing drums for a couple of tunes and whatever. Um, so yeah, man. It'd be nice to have another one, but <laughs> it's too much, too much hassle. So all right then. Question number two. How did you get into it? I got into music. Um, originally, just jumped on the wave. To be fair, secondary school, everyone was started being everyone was an MC in secondary school, and it so <laughs> jumped on jumped on the bowl. But everyone was on grime, and it was never mm. really my, my genre. It wasn't something I really put to the forefront. Um, I appreciated slower tempo production a lot more, and even like subject matter wise, I didn't really mm. like to, you know violence and rah, 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 rah. it wasn't mm. really my thing. Um, or, so I wanted. I think in my earlier stuff, it was very, even though I wasn't in one, it's very relationship heavy. Um, mm. Yeah, I preferred like a lot softer beats. So I think naturally I started going on like, um, I used to go on YouTube and I used to get like Destiny's Child beats and like all yeah. oh, R&B beats and stuff and just write like Tamiya so into you and stuff, Tabulous, like all these other beats and just start writing to that. Um, and that's originally when I started doing that. I bought a little, um, like a little video recorder from Argos. And then I started doing like little covers and that in my room. And I started putting it on, what did I start? Was it YouTube? Yeah, I think I made a little YouTube channel actually originally and I started okay. putting it on Diamond. So I didn't really post it on these times. I think we just had, it was after MySpace but before like all Instagram and stuff. So I think it was just like Facebook at the time. Mm. Um, yeah, but I would never post like the link or anything on like that. So um yeah for a, for a minute it was just on YouTube like I just put a little video here a little video there where, where, where. But I never like say it to anyone or I'd never do like live performances or anything like that it's just nerves really that's all I can say just nerves for the most part and then um yeah I carried on doing that for a little while and then I think like 2013 2014 not 13 in 2000 that's when I did like one of my first live performance like just had like a little open mic night in Brum. Can't remember what event it was. Um, it was round by you know where the big Johns is on the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> round there in that 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 little um that little um, place there, and it was like a poetry open mic kind of event they had, and I just did a quick acapella, you know, and from that, you know, what it is it's like the build up to it's worse than the actual performance itself. I feel but, like I know the name of that night, and now I can't remember it. I can't remember. Is it poetic essence or something like that, yeah. or? That, that was one of my first performances, but it was wasn't. It? it was in that venue, though. That's Poet. what I'm thinking. It's that space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I think Poet Essence would have been like my third or third okay. or performance, but it was that venue, though. So you got the venue, right? You get half the mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize there's points involved, but I'll pay more attention now then. <laughs> <laughs> So then, yeah, I did, I did the acapella there, and then, yeah, man, I had a good response from it. So then I started doing a few more. So that was the start of it, really. Um, and then I started doing a few more here and there. And obviously, with them, they had quite a few, like, poetry nights in particular. Because that's what I would say. When I first met you and came across your work was poetry. I could tell you were a rapper by, like, your flow and, like, you know. But So was it just was it just by chance that you kind of, I'm going to try a cappella, you know what I mean? Like, like... I think also I just never had the beats on me. <laughs> I just never had the <laughs> stick. Now that's confidence. You said you're unconfident, but that's confident. Oh, I ain't got the beats, but it's fine. I can just get up there and rock yeah. the crowd still. Like, yeah. You have to do it, man. It's 
follow it in your head. Like, you know, when it's just, and you know, when you can hear a pin drop, so you're thinking, don't, mm. don't mess up, don't mess up. And then, because you're thinking, don't mess up, you mess up. And it's like, oh man, why was I thinking that? I think that's <laughs> when it's going wow, though, man, when everyone shuts up in the audience, that's when you've, you've got them, man. So, yeah. I was so sure, yeah. Did a, did a bunch of uh, things. Then over time, I started doing it and stuff. Did I Love Live, did a few other things and that as well. And it kind of just grew from there, really. Um, then so I started doing like local performances in Brum for a while. And then obviously I got into busking as well. So busking's really when I started venturing outside of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Birmingham is a very good starting point, but I think to excel thoroughly, it's good to hit up other, you know what I mean, other spots, other cities. So when I started busking, I started busking in Brum, but then over time I'd go a little bit further out, go Wolverhampton and Carventry, mm -hmm. A bit further out, and a bit further out, and then got to the point where I was just doing like Manchester, London, Bristol, yeah, you know I mean, all over the place. And then with that also came performances that I was also doing alongside busking. So, for example, with London, I'd busk in the daytime, go to an event at like eight, and then jump on the last train back to Birmingham. Wow. You know, period of time, say like two years or whatever, two and a half years, where I was just doing busking local performances and then performances outside of the city so it kind of just built from there really um and then yeah me and my friend went to america for a bit and i think i was just exposed to a lot more of the world <laughs> and mm -hmm. then um, we went to like a few poetry nights open mic nights very rare and then when i came back to Birmingham, it was kind of like, came back to what i knew just me and then it's like because i've already experienced so much more than this i didn't want to be here anymore and just do this for the sake of it because it's like though i think Birmingham's a very good starting point but there comes a point where you're just doing the same thing now over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. it's like within a few months, you've literally done everything. So for me, it was a thing where that's when I decided, you know what, I'm going to move. I'm going to go to London for a bit and just see what happens. So yeah, this would have been about three years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, to London I stayed with a friend for like a month just to make sure I wanted to make the move was busking and stuff doing the open mic nights and that but it was nice because it's like it wasn't a thing where I had to rush anymore to leave because I was staying in central and then so yeah so I just utilized my time there really and then being down there I just felt more right it just you know it just feels right like not to be cliche but it's like it felt right in it and I felt like the, the roof had been kind of cracked open now so I was like okay hey, now there's things I can do now and then because <laughs> with Brom as well I felt like the though there were events I felt like they weren't that consistent so it's like yeah we got one this week but now we have to wait another week or two weeks for the next one do you know what I mean but with London it was like four or five events a day do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff, so it was and I, I'm very fast play come I just go in it like I just go and I can do endure so much so it's just a thing where it, it matched my pace a lot more than Birmingham did, Birmingham did at this point because I think just over time as well I was just I was very driven so I just need yeah. more, more, more so I couldn't be waiting a week for the next event do you know what I mean and it, so yeah stayed in London for a bit for that month that I moved was busking like every day attending open mic nights and, and local events started getting books for them as well it was nice because it's nice being the newbie in it because no one knows what you do anymore but with Brum, because it's so small, everyone already knows who you are before, you know what I mean? You can like that. So it was nice just being a new face. Mm. So I ended up doing like that. So I do like maybe sometimes two shows in a day, one the next day, one the next day, and just kind of building like a little portfolio, a little name down here. And nothing major, but it was just to get your foot in the water, really. Um, yeah, I started doing that. And then, yeah, towards the end of the month, I just decided, you know what? I'm going to stay. So ended up got my place here, ended up moving here, and I've been in London ever since. Though it's been about three years now, and from that obviously I've got like quite good bookings in different different places here. Still was getting like bookings in other cities and that, but it's kind of like the busking mixed with you know me also thinking outside the box and reaching out to other cities as well as Brum as all these other things. They kind of just all worked together for me because it's thing where it's not it's cool to be obviously you know where you what city you from and where 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 but. There's so many opportunities outside of the city, and I feel like a lot of people don't pursue anything else. Mm. And that's why you become so stagnant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think as well, like, kind of, it's almost like, contra not contradiction what you said, but I feel like with Brum, because it's like, it's small, but there's quite a lot going on. In well, it's it, it's the second biggest city, but like, I know what you mean, like, it feels like compact and that with the scene. And I feel like sometimes, because there is quite a lot of choice, like, you can, you can be busy in Brum. Like you can gig quite regularly and not have to leave the city, even though for you, obviously want it another level, which is incredible. But I think a lot of Brum artists don't leave the city because they can build up. You can have a regular flow of gigs for a couple of months just within the city. I don't know if like you disagree with that. that that's my opinion on it. Like, like 
also comes down to what type of artist you are. Mm. Maybe depending on the genre that you yeah, are. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. These times, as well, and this, I'm basing this up of three years ago as well. Mm. And, but I'm heavy, like, just really hip hop. And because it Kate, like, for example, it caters to like acoustic scene, the poetry scene, the grime scene. Really, I was neither of them. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's like, I don't, I don't feel like it really catered to my sound that no, well. Yeah. No, I hear that. I hear that for hip hop, especially like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got bookings, but for for what I was doing in that, not like really. as a novelty, like a, I mean, here's the here's the hip hop artist, like or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like it wasn't really there, and it, this is based off me three years ago. What yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. There's literally was nothing there, like one every few weeks, and it was like, nah, I can't be doing that still. So yeah, long story wow. short with all of that and then obviously the whole high focus thing happened but that wasn't from me busking or being in London that just happened by a word of mouth mm -hmm. it, was it was because I was in a bunch of different cities and yeah yeah um, in all these other cities people in the audience started to tell the um flip tricks the CEO of high focus mm -hmm. oh tremendous very you should check her out you should check her out and I think he was saying different people kept bringing my name yeah I'm me. hearing your name in 20 different cities or whatever like yeah, yeah that's wicked in different places for these people to even say it in the first place. Mm. So, said it like to the, the, the back and forth, long story short, I'm on it now. But yeah, all of that really just worked in my favor long term. You know what I mean? So that yeah, kind yeah. of yeah, now I'm just just doing my thing, really, you know, different Was opposite. that was that the plan to get like label attention or was that just a byproduct of grafting, if you know what I mean? Like yeah. No, because I thought I, I never really thought I'd ever sign to be honest. I thought I'd always just be the end of the, the chance to rapper. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> And I think these times where I didn't really know what being on a label meant neither. Do you know what I mean? Because in the early stage, it was like, oh, no, I can't. They're going to want to change me. And mm. I, didn't, I didn't really have no understanding. But I think being signed to an independent for me, personally, works out a lot better because mm -hmm. you have more free range. Um, and a lot, it's just a lot easier with an independent label than it is a major. And you have more not say bartering power, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just easy and like, they don't pressurize you as much. And mm -hmm. even if you've got deadlines for certain things, they're still just so easy with it. And do you know what I mean? They trust, well, in my situation, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that they, you know, they trust my my opinion on thing I'm, and how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to create this. They don't really try to change anything, like ever, which I'm very fortunate for and grateful for. So the situation, my label's going really well. So and on top of that, you know, other opportunities presented themselves from Boskin. For example, the advert work I got, the Subway advert in particular, was from Boskin. Mm. But the, the ones that I got recently, they was from people like a company that keep an eye on the releases for the label. I know I'm waffling a bit now. But, no, um, no, it's good. That was from um, people just like the new project I put out. They kind of submit things for like pitch, pitch, pitches for like placements and stuff. Mm. And, like, working in like um, adverts and stuff like that and it landed do you know what I mean so we ended up being on FIFA we got the Adidas thing got the Pepsi thing mm. a bunch of things that, and it just came like domino effect like back to back <laughs> it was sick like and especially because we was in a pandemic at the time like it was yeah. like and I just feel like if, if all these things if I didn't start how I started and took all these opportunities and built how I built none of this would have came I wouldn't have been in positions where the audience different members of the audiences would have seen me but none of them would have mentioned me too high focus I wasn't on high focus the team that works with the PR wouldn't have seen to put forward to that and mm. you know when everything's just linked when I look back so it's like I just feel like I just made the right choices long story short and it's like it's just to utilize more than what you're used and stop being so comfortable in just the one place all the time especially if it's not even though it's a big city it's like there's still so much out there in it mm -hmm. so it's like I mean, you're not a sellout. You're not this, that, and for <laughs> You know what I mean? No, it's like... No, I don't really, like, blood in, blood out, like, some loyalty or whatever, like, yeah. Birmingham City, and Birmingham has, like, the best musicians that I know are from Birmingham. The best musicians that mm -hmm. I know also feel like, like, don't be afraid to also venture out. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So many other things that do not know who you are. Do you know what I mean? Just in all these other parts as well. And you can always come back, man. It's not going nowhere. <laughs> wow 14 hours later what about you <laughs> I don't know if I need to say anything now I can't talk to Muck <laughs> uh, yeah. what was the question how do you get into it how it's you... going yeah yeah uh, how do I get into it I don't know man probably si a bit similar to you but mine was more just like I was kind of the opposite at school at school like there wasn't really many kids like me like, like there wasn't really many kids that were like creative and into music uh, but I was 
but I was always into it and that was cool. A lot of it, to be honest, come through like skateboarding when I was young, being exposed to like music and like graffiti and like kind of hip hop culture through through skateboarding. Uh, that, but how I got into it is probably just for as long as I can remember, like I went to like a religious school when I was like a kid and like we used to have to sing hymns and stuff. And um, they had like a little band, like band, it was just a load of percussion. <laughs> and I, and like, 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 everyone just hitting out of time. Like, oh, why didn't the band do well? Like, um, but I was always obsessed with like whoever was on like the snare drum. I would just watch. I just naturally like was a, like something inside me just gravitated towards like watching whoever was on the drum. And then one of my uncles is like a really good guitarist, like like rock and roll, like boogie woogie blues stuff. Like probably one, probably one of the best in the UK. Definitely one of the best in Brum. But like he's amazing. And good. I saw him. He played at one of my other uncles on my mum's side, the family's wedding, in his band. And it just blew my head off when I was like six years old. I can remember it. I was wearing like a blue shirt. I had a tie on elastic and it had watermelons on it for some reason. And it just blew my head off. And it wasn't even like, I want to play rock and roll. It was like, I want to play music. It was just like from that moment. So just as long as I can remember, I've just been like obsessed with the idea of like being a musician and being in bands and like kind of the romanticism of it. But um, but yeah, how, how I got into it really is just like, I was in a fortunate position where my parents could afford to get me drum lessons and I just started having drum lessons and, and, and through all the ups and downs that my parents went through and stuff like that and my family went through, I just consistently managed to keep getting a drum lesson and just that was it really, just played drums, pretty standard like, you know, did GCSE music, got enough to get into college, studied B-Tech at college, went to uni and studied it there. But it's not all about <laughs> listeners. It's not all about like, uh, you know, <laughs> education now. But then, it, yeah, it was just like, I was just practicing really, jamming with mates. And then just like when I was about 15, 16, cause I went to college, met the keyboard player in my band and we were into kind of similar music. He was into like ska and reggae and so was I. And we said, oh, why don't we like start a band? But it was just like the two of us at first. It was just like drums and keyboard. And then it was a matter of, cause I didn't really know many creators. It was like, well, some guys I know who I used to skate with, like one of them plays trumpet, and he's a kid brother, plays bass, uh, one plays guitar, let's like just have a go. And it, that's it. And I like that about our band that it was just a bunch of friends. It wasn't like we put an ad out being like looking for this. It was just like we just knew all we knew were these people around us. And it was just that's how it that's how it started, really, and just made a million mistakes along the way in the band, like you know, like getting ripped off here and there and like you know recording in awful studios where it sounded terrible and like or you know like all those mistakes that now I think like because I like you know I don't know about you but like for me like YouTube wasn't such a thing when like I started it wasn't like this big dominating yeah. cultural force that it is now like we had my I used my space to the band but like yeah. Facebook wasn't really popping and like I think the industry's changed so much well the, the game has changed so much and it's probably a decade and um, but I'm rambling now but yeah so got into that and then the, the, the writing just came because of just we needed someone to write the songs and I and I just had a go at it and really enjoyed it and just started writing more for the fun of it and I, I just think the more you do something the better you're gonna get at it so just started enjoying writing and then like I said the, the spoken word thing kind of came about with just um I was always writing like I said, that thing about Georgia Poe, but then it, to be honest, so, the whole thing of it is like, I went through a pretty rough time where like I went through a breakup and stuff like that. And then like some other stuff was going on in my life and just really rocked my confidence. And I was like, I'm going to do something for me. Like I'm going to do something for me, like, like blah, blah, blah. And just um, went to an open mic, an open mic poetry event and like did a couple of little open mic starts and got, got quite a good reception. And then in all honesty, the big thing for me was Beat Freaks, the organisation. So going along to their summer academies when I just left uni and signed up to the poetry thing and not the music thing, because I'd just finished uni of a music degree, just come back from playing in Lithuania. And I was like, oh, I wonder what this poetry stuff's about. And um, meeting like people like Anissa and Amira, uh, Amira Saleh, Anissa Hagdadi, and then um, them just taking me under their wing a bit and, introduced me because before that it was just music I didn't know people sat in a room and listened to people say I remember like the first like poems I heard like spoken word I was like where's the when does the music start I don't know, but when when does, when does the backing track come in like, I couldn't understand that people like just listen to words and stuff and fortunately I went down well unfortunately I enjoyed it and and yeah man I guess that's it really but it, it's kind of one of them that like always knew I was gonna end up 
doing this just didn't know how because I don't think you really taught about like how, yeah. how to like live as a musician or how to to make it and just, I just want to keep going really like like you said it was you it's just like just grafting in it really like just keep just keep doing it because you enjoy it like the money will come and all that kind of stuff but I'd probably do it if I wasn't making any money <laughs> anyway like so like for how long you've been pursuing music do you feel where you are is the right place or do you feel like you should have accomplished more oh god that's a that's a horrible question uh, like <laughs> like uh, but I think you I, I think because I'm quite a uh, I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm quite like a, like you said, like I'm quite, like you said, sorry, like I'm, I feel like I'm quite driven as well. And I feel like I always want to be somewhere else. Like I always feel like, ah, oh. and I think the older you get, you see like kids, like, you know, like I say kids, 18 year olds getting like signed and blowing up and you're like, oh man, what the hell? Like, you know, I'm like, like, um, but I just think it's different. It's different. Like now it's different exposure and stuff. So um, I think I always want more, but then I'm very proud of like, the stuff we've achieved because for us to even like we used to rehearse in my attic and for us to even get out of my attic was like massive because we, we, we were teenagers we, we'd never we'd never played a show we'd never we've never had a manager we've never had a booking agent we've never had anything it's all been completely like off us and like our networks and who we've met on our like journeys you know what I mean so I'm really proud of all that sometimes I think yeah we could do more but like I just really enjoy it so it's like I, I don't really care too much about like you know um but that's a good question but i think i think like yeah like the whole getting out of bum thing like we, we, we we've done that and we're still trying to do more play some more major cities you know play like we've never played in like manchester or bristol um so yeah man that's a really good question can i flip that back to you do you feel like you are you happy where you are you should you should be with everything you said but like yeah. i feel like in retrospective i feel like i should be further but mm -hmm. when i also analyze it from how microscopic like such thing because you know following and stuff is is a big part unfortunately in today's you know generation mm -hmm. stuff, it's like considering how microscopic in retrospective my following is for the bits and bobs that i've got i'm happy you know what i mean because i don't feel like not saying i don't feel like i shouldn't have got it because i definitely should have but mm -hmm. it's uncommon do you know what i mean it's like for example even just landing when we did um glastonbury it's like considering I'm still, I've still got a lot of work to do. I'm still heavily on loan, unknown, like to such and such. Mm -hmm. such and, the fact still got Glastonbury, it's like- Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Even with like the advert work and stuff, even though like I slowly see the the growth in like followers and streams and da 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 da, da it's still, you know what I mean? On the lower scale. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Back, you know, the McVitie's ad and rare, 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 regardless how small the following is, is an achievement. Do you know True. what I mean? outside is like how do you know what i mean i know what you mean yeah i know exactly with us well one thing i always talk about is like with um we we played one of those tedx events like we closed on those tedx events and we were trending on twitter but we didn't have twitter like like so it was like it was one of those things of like the, the word lobster was trending because everyone was going on about us but we weren't on there and, and it's always been that kind of thing with us that like but i do like that about us it's like i didn't I didn't get into this to be like an influencer, <laughs> like a marketable person. I got in it to make music. I understand that all of that is really important. And I do admire people that yeah. are on it with their marketing and the photo shoots. It's just like, it doesn't sit right with my like yeah, 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 yeah. soul, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not like what I'm about. And I don't want to, like, I could, I could do that and maybe it would help, but like, in my like artistic integrity, in my opinion, it's just like, that's not what I'm, about so it's like I can't moan at the same time if it's like well I'm not gonna like you know Snapchat every day or whatever you know <laughs> I don't know like I don't have Instagram like and it's just like you know like it's like that kind of thing man but, double it would not it like it's like kind yeah of, well, kind of them, especially really? like, utilizing social media and stuff it's like kind of a necessity <laughs> yeah <laughs> interact with followers, post and rare, 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 create a you know a direct bond with your fans, fans and rare, 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 right? It is a necessity. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of creatives are very like recluses. Like they're very mm. like I don't want it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. double edged sword. On the flip side, there's people that love it obviously. But I think also to have to always have to create this facade that you're always happy and everything's always mm. going it's the pressure of it, I think more so that people don't like. Yeah. And it surpasses the thing itself. You sure. got the whole mental health that comes with that if you're like you're not having a good day, but then you have to post like you're skipping yeah. down the road or whatever, like yeah. Oh, I hear you still. 
hear you. That's really, yeah. Like, I think, like, yeah, the, 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 one of the worst mistakes we've ever done as a band, I won't name the company, obviously, but we did this Battle of the Bands thing once yeah. where we were like, we, we were handing over huge amounts of money to this, like, uh, I mean, for teenagers, it was a lot of money, like 300, 400 pound in ticket sales like, to this company and stuff. And it was, um, and then they did text, they did text votes, which were a quid. And we got to the regional, regional final where we got to play like O2 Academy Brum, like the main stage, so like massive venue, which is yeah. wicked. And like we smashed it on all the judges point scores. Yeah. Um, and then we didn't get to go to the, the final in London because another band had more text votes than us. So they just got more of their mates to like text in. Like, so it was like a proper popularity contest where like the guy from Kerrang scored us like 19 out of 20 or something like that. And then, and then like, but this other band just got more of their, <laughs> their people to text and like they got through. And like that, that's like the thing that was always like grinded on me of like, it's like, it's wicked you got fan base to support you and that's wicked they can put their money, but like not all of our friends can afford to like pay 25 pound in, in, in texts and stuff and like, you know, tell, but I tell that to the kids I work with, I'm like, because now like with YouTube, so YouTube's such a massive thing. I like it when they see a video and it's like, it's six, six million views or whatever. And they're like, oh, like my man's making pee. And it's like, man, six million views don't mean six million pounds. Probably don't even mean 600, <laughs> 600 pounds. Like, or the label or the, the you know, the, the, uh, the videographer might or whatever. But like, and it's that as well. Like, I think that it's, the game's changed in terms of like, numbers are so important. But I always tell the kids side that talent is like you can buy, you can buy butts, you can buy views, you can buy clicks, but you can't buy the talent kid. So like make sure you're good at what you do first. Like, <laughs> and it's true, like I'm keen about four mils and no artists and unknown no artists do it. You know what I mean? Like likes, you can buy Spotify, you can buy everything apart from really comments, like legit comments. At the yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, but it will get there. It will get there. <laughs> like, their egg accounts with different different sentences. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the same process I had with process I had with like awards. It's not an organic mm. outcome because realistically, okay, you have who's someone that's really okay, you'll have a Dell and then you can have someone very unknown or just known in their niche. Um everyone for the unknown person could vote for them to win that that award. 15 to 20 percent of Adele's following could vote for her to win mm. that. Still gonna win it. Yeah, now, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not because no one thought you should win, but it's it's also based off how big you are as an artist that comes down to really are you going to win or not? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. an organic. Do you know what I mean? It's like it doesn't matter. It's just a numbers game. It's a numbers game. So it's like who has the biggest following, basically. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's a skill to it. Like, don't, don't, you know, don't get it twisted. Anyone that can do that mad marketing, like, you know, yeah. there is, there's, there's an art to it. But I always feel like you should be in it to like make the music and then let everything else be second. If you're in it to just make content, maybe be like a blogger or something, or like, I don't know, like, yeah. Like, like the money aspect and just the want of like hitting a million followers or having mm. a million streams should never be the forefront. You know what I mean? Of what you want to pursue, you and you're always going to be chasing it. And then it's like when yeah. you, well, then you're going to want more. Like it's never end. It's a never like for example, you you could have all the Jordans that have ever come out. As soon as a new one comes out, <laughs> like you're incomplete now. Like it's like, a, iPhone, iPhone fourteen yeah. point whatever. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. like it's a never ending chase. These things don't hold substance like that. It's not mm. real things. Do you know what I mean? So it's to do it for the, the love of it, the passion of it, try not to get bumped on the way. But as musicians, we all go for our situations where people mm. try to take a mic. But do you know what I mean? But you just put your love for it to the forefront and getting better. And you know what I mean? If it's to help people or da 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 da, da mm. everything else will come. But to put accolades and stuff to the forefront, like it's not it's not a genuine want, man. Like it's not real. Do you know what I mean? So I definitely hear you though. So I guess this links really nicely to the last question, which is what would you say to the young? I think we've said it all basically. Like, don't don't do that the bands. Don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. Find a nice job. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what would be your advice? No, your... No. I think what you just said is like the nail on the head. Like that's what I would say. It's like, do it because you love it. Like let that be the thing. And then if it, you know, even if you like. I don't know, man. You work like a nine to five and then just gig every weekend and you love it. That, that's awesome. Just make it because you enjoy 
creating. And it's fine to work a nine to five while you're pursuing it. You know, like with well, with rappers in particular, I see there's ego, there's a big ego that comes to it and no one can be seen. Do you know what I mean? Where can a nine to five to pursue before? But no one can get funding because obviously we have to come out of pocket for it. And, mm. and it's like, like, don't be fearful of silly things. Don't think yeah. you only have to the same outfit once. Like, don't, do you know what I mean? And it's like, for me, yeah, again, utilize social media. Even though, obviously, I know it can be annoying and if, if you're recluse or whatever, but utilize it. It's free for now. It's yeah. free. Utilize it. Be uploads. If you're a singer, you want to do covers, do a cover once every week. Build your name. Build your... Uh, attend open mic nights. Attend, like, yeah. you can attend, like, just local events and stuff. Build build your name. Build your portfolio. And then don't be afraid to also venture out from that and start getting your name in other cities and stuff. Um, yeah, just branching out, utilizing your platform, and then things will start coming over time. But just be patient, um, be persistent with it. Make sure there's a good quality control. Um, it's fine to also dabble in different genres if if you want to find your feet, because a lot of people don't know their sound either. Do you know what I mean? So it's fine to kind mm. of figure it out. And it's like even with me personally as well. Like with the last project I put out, it was very um, eclectic, very you know versatile. Yeah. So it's like there's songs that people will prefer, and there's certain people won't like that 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 so for example i've got like more commercially sounding songs or a bit more that i wrote for example okay with in mind. so it's like it wasn't because i wanted to lose myself or whatever. it still has substance in it lyric wise and it's still i still love the song but it's just yeah. that i wanted something that could be played on radio or used on tiktok do you know what i mean it's okay mm. also to think ahead if you want to stand no no fully I'm, I'm working on a load of just like chilled lo-fi beats just because i'm noticing People love it and people are like, and I like listening to it. It's like, oh, I'll make something like that. Maybe we'll get on a playlist. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's like, it's not selling out to go, oh, this yeah. is, this. Is, I'll, I'll, I'll try making it. Like, I find that in my work as well, because the kids are into all different stuff. Like, yeah. you know, I'm working with one kid that's like really got me into kind of the whole Afro swing thing. Like, like yeah, and like he wanted to make like an Afro swing tune. So it's like, it's my job to like know what that is yeah. and know how it works. So I've been listening to a lot of that and it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. I could make some more beats like this, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, yeah. Like, it's okay to be versus. I just find your feet and you find what works. And it's like, don't be hesitant to do it just because you think people aren't going to just find out. And, you know, regardless how fantastic the song is, there's always going to, you're always going to receive criticism. So it's like not to take things personally as well. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Criticism or someone's not going to like it at some point, right, right, right. But don't let it discourage you or discourage Yeah, you. I feel like you got, you got to be pretty arrogant to think everyone's going to like your thing. Like, you know, <laughs> you can like, you know, like, there's, art, there's records that are number one that I don't, I think are whack. <laughs> but it's obviously like a lot of people like them. So yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Everyone's got their own preference, man. So you're not going to get a universally sick response. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you've got your audience, your following. Someone, someone, they'll like it, but don't take things too personally. Don't take it too thirsty, man, because... Yeah, it's like, it's not you. They might not like your tune, but it doesn't mean that you're, like, (laughs) whatever, like, yeah. It's a game, man. It's true. It's It's a game. Mm. (laughs) It's a game. Yeah. And I think everyone, and I think the game changes. The game changes so quick and so fast as well. (laughs) Oh, I feel like we need to have a more positive, positive way to... (laughs) Just love it. That's a positive. Just love it and everything else will fall in line. Like, you know, just enjoy it and yeah, make it because you enjoy it. Love it. <laughs> love it. Yeah, love it. Right. I think that's a good way to round it up. Just love it. Right. I'll...